quiet up there? What? Is it quiet up there? Um, yeah. Leslie, Devin, and I holding down the fort. Good. Yeah, busy during the day. Yeah. I went to feed the cat. Great. I'll be right back. Yep. Thanks for the budget, Susie. What's that? Thanks for the school budget. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, this is the part where they have constant meetings. Uh, you know, Caitlin is doing all the towns, answering the questions, doing the public hearings, doing the regular meetings, pretty nonstop. Well, I appreciate the reference. Uh -huh. Glad to see they cut it instead of increasing it. Uh -huh. All right. Hey everyone, yeah. uh, I'm gonna be on my phone for a few minutes because my computer decided to like do a big long update thing <laughs> right as I was <laughs> sitting down. Uh, so looks like it's got a couple minutes left. So I'll just be on my phone and then I'll switch over to my um, my desktop. Alrighty. So let's see, I think we've got everybody. Are we wait? Uh, Jim Walton said he would, be probably running late, might not be joining us. Otherwise, I see everybody here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, just so you know, I'm, there's a couple of changes to the agenda tonight. Um, we're going to do the assessor budget review, which I assume, Becky, you're going to um, sort of walk us through tonight yeah. since we don't have an assessor. Um, and, uh, and then I also want to add uh, a few minutes for us to schedule out the rest of the budget year, um, working backwards from schedule town meeting. And uh, I think uh, I was hoping, George, we could just spend a few minutes on the COLA calculation for FY24, sure. if we can just make sure everybody's on the same page about that and, and you can kind of walk us through sure. how that how that gamed out this year. Okay. Um, the other thing to mention is that we had to move capital planning. I guess we'll talk about that when we talk about the schedule for the rest of the season uh, because the highway department's still not, well, a couple of reasons, highway department's still not ready um with all of their information um that they need um in terms of other bids um for the backhoe they're requesting and then also um we've asked the school to um produce a couple of other competitive bids for for their project so we've moved them to the next um meeting they were originally on tonight's agenda but we had to move them okay um so why don't we start with minutes from, let's see, <laughs> February 7th. Mm -hmm. It's Yeah, uh, Susie? Yeah. And all, uh, look, hi, uh, on 3A and B, and then when we were discussing the school budget, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, you, you, you uh, summarized the discussion and, uh, you know, my, my recollection is that the my position was, and I, maybe others was that that should be uh, that school choice should be supporting the budget as a revenue source, and you know, other uh, other opinions were were expressed, but uh, that's not really there. I mean, it's, it's there, but the way that I see these notes, Susie, is uh, you've got on A and B, you've got a remark by. By, by George saying that uh, uh, other uh, 
departments have funds to draw on outside of their operating budget, which should be with, I think, A, uh, because it's kind of a, it's a, 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 a remark that's directed at the issue, which is whether or not the school choice money should be shown as a revenue source against the total expense of operating the school, right? Do you follow me? So what I'm suggesting is that that go up there, that remark that George made, and that- Is that uh, remark in the minutes? It's uh, in the so minutes. Please. The yes, it's in the minutes. 3B. 3B, right? <clears throat> the reason I put it in 3B is because Dan talked about drawing from funds that they, <clears throat> that they are able to do. So that was putting George's comment in there. And the sentence that was the key for our discussion is in 3A and it says, is it best to present them as separate components as is currently done or should the costs and revenues be incorporated into the operating budget? That was the discussion. So that's how it's presented in that. <clears throat> 3A. Right. I, I, I just think that George's remark was kind of uh, a, a appropriate to that discussion. And he, see, my, one of my remarks was, look, we have to just to do an accounting of the revenue and the expenses and the various sources of revenue are listed in the revenue side and the expenses are listed. We don't, we don't direct the school to spend it in any specific way. But uh, George said, there are other town, there are other town departments. I don't know if this is true. We'll, we'll have that discussion later, but he did say there are other town departments that have, uh, that have revenue sources that are off budget. <coughs> Right, George, is that true? Yeah. If you look at the if you look at the budget expense report that we get from Becky, when you get past page seven, you've got all those different funds used for so many different 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 things. That's what I was referring to. Okay. And um, you know, outside of the operating budget, which is what this note says. So as far as I know, this note seems accurate to me. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. I, I, it didn't seem right to me, but that's why I brought it up. Okay. Yeah, Bob. If you look in, if you look at that expense report and you go through it, right, you're familiar with a lot of those. Expenses. Yeah, and yeah. and you can see a lot of so there is a lot of money out there that doesn't affect directly the operating budget that we approve at annual town meeting. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, there, but in the court, in, in in terms of the minutes of what we discussed last meeting, I think I just want to be clear that my position was that other towns in our neighborhood do the way that I was promoting. That is put it against the budget. Leverett and Pelham do, I know for a fact. So that's what I want to see. That's all. I'm not making the argument now. I'm just trying to see that the minutes re reflect that. And I thought you were supporting the other argument, the argument, you know, the other side of that, it, uh, that that uh, which I was, was just making a point. I was just making a point, Bob. That's all. I, I you know, it's it's up to the committee. It's that's just oh, one to remind everybody I mean, I mean, that that's not an uncommon thing. That's all. Yeah. Um, in terms of school budgets, it seems to be unusual to do it that way. But you know, uh, so that's why I was, that's why I brought it up. So uh, if I if I if you made a mention that I said that Pelham and Leverett do it that way, uh, that would that would make me happy. Uh, make it make it clear in the minutes. Susie? Yeah, I get it. I'll do that. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions about the minutes? Um, yeah, I, I have um, something I just want to move back down to. If we go to 4E, uh, the very last sentence, I think it says here uh, we would like to. Um, the 2021 yield yielded about 5.65%. That 5.65% is the expected long-term rate of return that was in the actuarial report. That's not what we actually yielded. That's what... Okay. That's the assumption that's built into there. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I can change that to say um, the actuarial report expected or projected a long-term yield of five point. Yeah, the, I, I wrote it down here, Susie. The actual wording in the report is expected long-term rate of return. Okay, if you'd send me that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, yeah, I'll take, a, I'll take a screenshot of this, what I've got. I'll send it to you now. Okay. 
any other comments or questions about the minutes? I thought um, on 5D, it says CONCOM draw on their own funds. I know their consultant account was 5,000. Was all their other funds, did everything add up to 7,000? Because I thought it yeah. was 5,000. Okay, there's other They had the consultant account that you all um, gave them last year to do a specific task that has not been done. And then um, with all the heavy um, work that they did with the NRADs last year, they racked up um, $7,000 in their fee account. Or got it up to seven thousand. I don't think it was all from last year, but she said it. Um, the N um, the N rads and O rads um, that came through were heavily feed and built up the account, so it'd be, take a long time to get it back to that level if she spends it. Any others? Um, the motion to approve as amended is that okay or is there, are you at something Becky no uh, it's for after you finish voting I just triggered I my that. memory okay I'll second that motion sorry let's uh do a roll call vote I for to say Groves I muted Jim Jim you're muted sorry about that uh Hemingway I Cashew I Mosier I Okay, so that uh, passes six zero. Okay, um, next up is the assessor uh, budget review. And Becky, do we have a budget document for the assessor? Um, I thought I sent it. I'm not sure if I sent it. No, I, I thought so. I had at the end there. No, no, I never saw it. I never okay. saw it. Okay, so I apologize. I had it two weeks ago. It's this, it's just a um, gently modified from last year. So okay. do you want me to just yeah, can, put it on screen you, for now? Can and you then pull it up? It? Yeah, can yeah. you do two things for me? Just pull it up and then um, at some point just email it to, uh, to us. And, yeah. um, save it. Yeah. I just want to, for insurance, make George and AJ the host in case I lose. Yeah. Reception. Okay, and then share screen. Okay. All right, so um, similar to last year, well, I, I, um, I went through, I know we, continue to have all these expenses. There's a couple, like the utility one, um, I still have to follow um, after I consult with uh, one of our consultants. Um, but for now, I'm leaving what will be uh, these positions in place, um, hopefully before the budget is final, we might have an idea of how we might want to change this. But for now, our um, our board members and our clerk are hard at work. Our clerk has used um, more, she's been working more closer to 15 to 20 hours a week. So has been using the assessor's budget line to get through this year to get all the work done. Um, so for next year, FY24, we know from what George um, and the personnel board did on the COLAs that we're gonna have 3% raises. This is just to give you a sense of the, the budget numbers. Um, if we luck out and find an assessor who's certified, we'll need the $1,000. I don't see any need to change the expenses. Um, they've stayed about the same. We still have a lot of um, printing costs and other computer related costs and filings to do. Um, 
Uh, Kevin had noted that um, this is going to go up another 10% this year um, on the CAMA. So I put that change in there at the 9857. Our GIS web posting for now is the same. Um, Reval is interesting. We have uh, a fair amount of money in Reval at this time. So until I can, until we confirm in the next couple of months who we're going to, how are the department will operate, I'm going to leave that um, at no change. These are the 504 utility valuations are very complicated. We're going to have to find somebody to do that. Um, it could come out of um, the reval. We might be able to drop it from the budget. Uncertain at this point, and un also uncertain with uh, personal property valuation service. Um, whether we will need him if we go to a, a different consultant or not, or a different administrative assessor. Does anyone have any questions? Bob? You're muted, Bob. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, my recollection is, Becky, that the last year, uh, Kevin represented to us when we met that these uh, two lines on the bottom, class 504 personal property, required us to hire consultants. Um, he's also kind of hedged on it and said that he wasn't really, he could do it himself, but you know, that would be, for some reason, it wasn't practical or, or something. So does that mean what you just suggested that we might be able to clear those items off the budget, possibly this year, if we have a different person? We won't be able to get rid of the costs. They might come in at a different cost. Yeah. Um, like the, the utility valuations, because Kevin at first thought he could learn how to do it. Yeah. Um, but in talking with uh, Roy Bishop and David Burgess, there's about a thousand calculations involved and it gets pretty complex. So most people um, have a program yeah. that they run it through to develop it out. And without the program, it, it's quite difficult. We might be able to reduce the costs, but um, I believe they're gonna, for the utility valuations, that's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. I don't think we can fully get rid of them, but I'm trying to reduce them. Great, thank you. Jim? Yes, uh, uh, Becky, perhaps you can answer this question. Um, when Kevin was around, um, he's, he spoke quite fervently about sending in a consultant to look at this at the cell tower um, on Wendell Road, the new cell tower, which of course is in operation now. And there is a lot of equipment that um, we could be um, uh, we we would be interested in knowing the value of. I was wondering whether that consultant ever showed up, and whether whether that uh, which was going to be a revenue source for us uh, from AT and T. I was wondering whether that there's been any progress on that or whether that's just gone because Kevin is gone. Um, the value of the cell tower isn't gone. So I do believe oh, I we'll, we'll be able to regain that. I mean, we'll get, we'll determine the value of the cell tower to us and have it taxed appropriately. Um, that might take um, a couple months to get done, but I think, you know, it, I don't think we were going to lose sight of that. Well, I know that, but 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 there was a matter of this special consultant that that really apparently knew and understood cell towers and how to value them. I was just wondering whether that person is still uh, in the works or whether that's sort of disappeared. I, you, you may not know the answer to this question, but I'm I'm just curious about that because it is um, a commercial a particular rent. person yeah. that yeah yeah that it was Kevin had spoken to about pulling in when it got. Uh, I don't we have not found his name in the records. Oh, all right. Well, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have the full value appraised and um, mm -hmm. on the books. Um, George? And there may also be other people who, you know, there probably are people out there. In, uh, Dave Burgess could probably find somebody who has that expertise. I can't imagine municipalities don't require it. Um, my questions are computer maintenance, uh, comma system. Is we're getting data. 
assessor's data, no, we're getting collector's data. We're getting the new software system. Is the, how's the assessor's department affected by the new accounting software? Are they? Yes. Yes, so, they will be because um, Vision, their main software is Vision for the assessors. And two years ago, when Kevin, well, when Kevin was fully in charge or two quarters ago, he hired this outside firm to do the utility valuations and the personal property. And they did the tie-in to Ellen Software. Last year, not no, because I had called the same vendor to do the personal property. And the person I spoke to said that we had no relationship with them and turned out to be an error and somebody who normally didn't work. But he told me that. And so we moved ahead and did the personal property and we were straight from vision into points uh, software. So at this point, we'll likely to do vision again directly. Vision will go directly into VADAR, into the collecting module. And it'll really streamline because um, everything will be tied through VADAR. We'll have the, we'll have the assessor will module for assessing the vision software can go straight into the VADAR software. And okay. that's not going to be a problem. Okay, that's not going to be a problem, but we're still going to be using the existing program. So like the treasurer, like the other departments save money on maintenance by going through the new accounting system. That's not the case for the assessors is what I'm hearing. Right. Okay. Um, and, my other, and my other comment was the last two lines that Bob was referring to for those valuations. Um, I'm wondering why we don't have those budgeted in the reval line where we do all our valuations and why we need separate lines for those. I think because he was trying to, because they the way they were defined is different than the valuation, the major valuation, which is generally real estate property, not um, not the utilities and not the personal property. And so you think this is the right way to do it, is to keep them separate? I mean, I I, I think I, until we figure out what bucket these services are going to be paid out of. Because right, right now, that's a separate vendor for the personal property valuation. Um, and our reval usually has, you know, it's done at the, you know, we just had a reval done. We just had a consultant come in and do it. Um, but yeah, these it, are special annual revaluations, not. I understand that, but it, they're all revals, and I just hate they create new lines in the budget. That's fine. I'm okay with it. I just wanted to bring it up for debate. But okay, if 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 you're comfortable with it and you feel it's okay, nobody yes, else. Yes, for right now, it. till we make sure um, we know we're going to stick with them or not stick with them, and if we're not going to stick with them, which is likely, or we're going to reduce the cost, um, I just want to keep my eye on them and not forget them. Okay, Susie. Um, and also, um, Kevin presented that those valuations pay for themselves, and I don't know if that's an important thing to keep track of. Um, and then I had a question if um, Vision would start using VADAR without any ransom notes, like <laughs> some of our friends. Yes, they will. I believe. My understanding is that yes. and. The accountant pointed out to me that her system did not seek a ransom and neither did the treasurer's last year. It's only Ellen's that um, is trying to catch us on their deathbed. Yeah. What's the name of that company again? Point. Point. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Be in the newspaper tomorrow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. All right. Any other questions about the assessor budget? All right. Not seeing any. Thanks, Becky. Um, okay. Uh, 
Next up, uh, I just put a item for a four town meeting debrief in case uh, folks had anything they wanted to discuss coming out of that uh, out of that meeting. We haven't met since that <clears throat> since that meeting occurred. Any questions or comments, um, concerns, Susie, and then Bob? I think you did a good job off the cuff trying to answer that question, but it made me feel like if that was going to be a question about our feelings about the salary and how do we want to weigh in, that they need to send us a list of questions ahead of time because that, yeah. that felt not clear to me that it was coming. And then my own personal feeling about it is that there's certainly a bunch of contexts right now for cost of living increases being more than 2.5. And you know they said that about half of the people don't get steps, and um, you know I I I don't know what I think the answer is that was going to be one million or was it one and a half million this and then two million I you know yeah those are big numbers but yeah. um, I felt like we weren't really prepared and I I think that uh, there might have been other ways of deciding about what the cost of living should have been. Yeah. Um, but just be, be, before I get to your comment, Bob, I'll just tell you just my reading of the context for that. And I might be wrong about this, but was that, you know, they're, they are in obviously the middle of a negotiation um, with the union and they, they were looking for sort of like some some ammunition, you know, like some some getting the towns on record to say that, you know, that ask is not going to be feasible. Um, it, it was almost like sort of they, that was kind of they primed us <laughs> for for that kind of a response. But I don't know. Anyway, that was that that that's what it that seemed like the the kind of context for for that question. But anyway, Bob. Yeah, I guess just to follow up and. I agree with you on that. I think uh, if they can't get any sympathy from finance committees, who are they going to get it? You know, so right. uh, the one thing that stood out to me was that they did have one of the the slide decks that we saw. I might it might have been the one by uh, Ben, the uh, chair of the regional school committee, yeah. showed some graphic about the relative cost of uh, uh, the uh, two things: one, the average salary for teachers in uh, the town of Northampton, the region, uh, East Long Meadow and Long Meadow. And I couldn't find that in the materials that had been forwarded to us. So I actually emailed, um, uh, I, what's her name, Figueroa, the secretary for the region, right. asked her to present, to provide me with those materials, which I'll be happy to forward to the committee. And they do show that some, a remarkable um, difference between Northampton and Amherst, which I consider to be somewhat comparable communities in terms of their diversity population and so forth. Uh, East Long Meadow is a different category of town altogether, but uh, that's pretty, it was a pretty uh, astonishing and pretty powerful uh, argument to say that Northampton uh, teachers get paid about $20,000 less per annum than Amherst ones. So, and then if you look at the cost per student in those, in those different school, uh, regions. Again, Amherst is the most expensive. So uh, it's just something to, to look at. Uh, what what are we are we paying fair uh, compensation to these people? Uh, but the other thing I want to bring up just very briefly is what I see since I've been on this committee and going to these meetings is that every year Amherst is trying to control spending, trying to control the budget, saying he's going to put a cap on the budget of 2% or 2.5% or whatever it might be in a given year. And every year, the you know the cost of uh, salaries is going up uh, more than that. So what they've done as a result is to squeeze uh, other parts of the budget to accommodate the expense of the salaries. And so they're going to have to change their tune. They're going to have to either accept the salaries and and continue to support the rest of the budget, uh, or they're going to have to you know come get more you know get more uh, disciplined about. Uh, salaries, if they can do such a thing, I don't know if the climate we're in, what what they can do, but but I just one other small point, which is that the fields, which we never discussed at this meeting, which kind of surprised me, hmm. the, the issue of the astroturf, 
the the ask the the reason one of the reasons they need these fields done is that they've really also squeezed the maintenance and uh, uh, budget lines for the turf fields at the high school. Talking to somebody who was the athletic director and another person who worked in school and said that he was really pulling his hair out trying to get money from the administration to maintain his fields because and they and and, and he was not not successful because there was, wasn't enough money for that and so now. We're going to have to go capital to do something that should have been taken care of and operating, and that's that's just part of the mechanics of this budget process. I think you know the politics of it. I guess uh, it's it's hard. Uh, the math doesn't work out unless Amherst is willing to spend more, and and they're the ones that run this show. We all know that, right? And I I think you're you're right, Bob. And but and I also think to what compounds that is that. You know, we've had the, the region has had these buckets of kind of bailout funds that they could utilize yeah. to minimize um, these cuts required to accommodate Amherst, whatever, two, two and a half percent um, limit. <clears throat> and those are obviously not going to be, a, you know, are not are not permanent and they're going away. And so yeah. I do agree with you that there's. Yeah, they called it the cliff. Yeah, right. The cliff. Yeah. Yeah. It's not sustainable. These salaries not, aren't sustainable. Not. It just doesn't mm -hmm. add up. And we heard it from the other towns, too. I mean, Leverett was pretty clear and Amherst was clear about what they can afford in the long run. And, you know, we got a free pass this year because we cashed in on the 4% cap that limited how much um, we could save in our assessment last year. And we're getting the benefit of that this year. But next year, we're back on track with the increases affecting us directly, and we're going to see much larger increases in the regional school going forward. So we're in the same boat, really. I think yeah. Leverett's comments are yeah. pretty relevant to us. Yeah. No, that's a good point, George. And I think we should, when it comes time to preparing our budget report at the end of the year, um, I think we, we have a little work to do to just sort of prepare our um, residents for that reality which is you know for we we've got you know we because of this assessment issue we've we've been experiencing you know reductions this year it's basically a flat budget but um you know that's not going to be the case moving forward and i think people like we we need to kind of prepare the town for that reality i think one minor thing if i may that i've really been thinking about for a while and i wanted to spring on us was on that annual report, that last section where we have notes, and that's mm -hmm. where you're referring, putting it, I believe. Yeah, correct. I'm thinking we. I'm thinking we should think about breaking that into two two areas. One is opportunities, and one is risks. Mm -hmm. But we can talk about that later. But I would definitely put that under a risk. Yeah, and I think we should really break out what could help us and what could hurt us, mm -hmm. and and that would definitely go under her category. It's just something to think about for whoever's in that report. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? Uh, let's see. Jim Hemingway. Yes. Uh, I, this may be a little off topic, but uh, is did we have an update on the uh, on the track and field option one, option two, option three? Um, what's the status of that right now? So my okay. So my and other folks can chime in if they have more recent information. But um, my understanding is that they are moving forward with the turf field that that project is considered funded um now that's that's um based on an estimate of what it's going to cost um but the fundraising target that was required to um to move forward with the the, the turf option um was met and so um so i believe you know that project is considered sort of approved and is, and is going to be moving forward. Um, I think in terms of like issues rele relevant to this budget season, you know, I think we, you know, I'm not sure how how we're going to be impacted um, since we've already there was already the um, the the allocation that from last year that started this. And I believe they've submitted um, a request um, 
through our CPA, right? And that set, or no, they, they, they ended up not doing that, Becky? I didn't, I didn't hear about, they missed the deadline. I don't believe they did. Okay. All right. So I was right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I don't, I actually, it doesn't sound to me like there's going to be any, any budget request or um, vote at, at, at our annual town meeting that is going to be relevant to the track project. The funds that they need from us were allocated last year um, for that for that project, and you know, the rest of it has been um, has been supported through a couple of votes that the town that well, I guess the Amherst Town Council made, and then the Amherst um, CP. There's a CPA allocation that was approved, and and then private private fundraising. So, I think that's kind of where things stand. Susie, and then George. Um, on that um, propose on that possibilities sheet that um, Doug Slaughter sent, there were a couple of things that Shootsbury would could be suggested to do in order to meet option three. And one was to turn the E and D money that was excess that came back to our town in free cash. That was one part. Another part was CPA. Um, and then there was the baseline of what was going to be um, needed that started off with option one. So I don't really know how, what the alternative to that is. Um, and, and, you know, Everybody has a zillion things going on, but we would need to know what yeah. what they think that it what the proposal is. Okay, my sense of it, Susie, is that they're gonna they're reluctant to to ask the towns for additional uh, funds uh, for this project, and that I think they're my my having watched the you know most of the, I think the regional meetings about this subject. I think they're they're wanting to kind of move forward with the funds that have been allocated to date, and then the private fundraising efforts. That now that's a pretty big hole to drive through, but that's fine. I mean, they'll tell us. Yeah, they'll tell us right exactly. George. Yeah, one of the, one of the things that I've always noticed with the region is that when it comes time for them to buy capital items, they they borrow and then they spread the debt service around to the four towns, and it always seemed to me that. You know, when we buy anything in our town, CapEx, we're always looking at how much stabilization and free cash and capacity we have in the operating budget for debt service. Yet we don't get that option when it comes to the regional school. And I'm just wondering if there's a way for us to have a conversation with them about that. Because if we find ourselves in a good cash position, you saw what our debt service is going to look like in five years if these projects all move forward that they're presenting. Mm -hmm. And so having some flexibility to use the, the cash that we, you know, sometimes comes our way, a lot of times comes our way. I don't know how to approach them on that, but it seems to me, I talked to Doug Slaughter about it last year at our town meeting. I went over and, and had a conversation with him, you know, but clearly it wasn't addressed in this meeting last Saturday or two Saturdays ago. So I don't know what the answer is, but I do think that we should have some flexibility and determine how we fund some of the, our portion of the CapEx yeah, in the region. That's an interesting point. Yeah, maybe um, we can write them. I, I think that like conversations are hard to. I think we should put it in writing and and ask that question and ask but, the question what that what they're basically are we on the right assumption now or is there something else we need to know? We should write to them. I'm happy to be involved in writing that letter. Okay. I'm not sure the best way to address them, but I, I'd be happy to be involved in that. Yeah. So Susie, you're suggesting we can use that as an opportunity to both kind of check in on what the funding assumptions are for the project and also this bigger picture question that George is raising about are there is 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 there a discussion to be had about um how towns can utilize multiple methods to fund our obligations. So, yeah. Okay. And AJ? Okay. Yep. Um, just to be fair to Doug, when he did come to the select board meeting in the summer to talk about the track, he was asking those questions. Yeah. Um, so it's unfortunate that 
I mean, he was he was trying to get a sense of how the town would go about funding it and and what we wanted to do. Right. And unfortunately, Susie did represent FinCom, but it would have been good if more members had attended that meeting. But yeah. we didn't, there was a lot of unknown. So I feel like it's not a challenge. We're not writing a letter to challenge them. We're asking to figure it out where we yeah. are. Yeah. And I think also I'm George is saying that that he's he's been trying to figure it out for a year. Yeah. And when he came to the select board that day, he had a, a spreadsheet of different options, like yeah. all those alternatives, trying to figure out how to relate to Shootsbury in this conversation. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. I think he would be happy to have you guys reach out to him to have that yeah. conversation. But also I think I think George's point is a is is broader than the, the track, right? It's really about like the whole collection of capital projects that the region has committed to um, and sort of what what are some other approaches to um, kind of planning um, and funding our obligations so that um, we're not kind of hit down the road with some of those huge numbers that we're seeing in the projection. Mm -hmm. Bob? Yeah, I just want to respond to what George says. You know, every year when we make our, our introduce ourselves at the four town meeting, we talk about how we have to do the roof and we have to do a new truck and we have to do this. I think we have to be somewhat cautious about saying that we're flush with cash and yeah. we, could pay, we could pay it up front, you know, uh, <laughs> because uh, they seem to be financing everything down there in Amherst. Like I saw, I read an article about the this this issue of the turf field, and apparently the CPC in Amherst is borrowing eight hundred thousand dollars to contribute uh, to that project, which seems to be a pretty extraordinary thing to do for the CPC. Uh, but that's what they've done, and then, and and again, just I, I don't know all the answers, but I I did read something in the Amherst Indy, which where there's a lot of uh, talk about this particular issue. And they were saying that they really didn't meet the deadline, but they were promised at the deadline that there'd be more fundraising and so forth, this kind of thing. So I don't know what, how, how uh, this deadline, how, how. Oh, I, 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 I can speak to that. So the, so the deadline was for. Um, 16. Yeah. And it was. Um, it 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 was it allowed the way it was written. Um, I think the, the original um, uh, budget referendum. The way it was written, it was it allowed them to count both funds that were sort of committed in writing as of that January. What, what, what was it? Susie, the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah. Um, and as well as I don't know what terminology they used, but funds that were um expect expected or anticipated and so i think that that might be what you're speaking to bob is that yeah, yeah. there was there were certain certain like commitments that they had the the uh, fundraising committee the boosters had obtained in writing and then there was a set of commit commitments that were in progress and had been like yeah, right. verbally verbally offered but didn't have written documentation and i think I, I remember watching a meeting where um, Sean Nangano had referred to the actual writing in the referendum, and it seemed like it, they were allowed to consider both of those those thoughts. George, yeah, I would agree with Bob. I would never use the word that we're flush with cash. I don't think we are, anyways. But um, I, I no, the way I would approach it is that we have flexibility to look at our options. That's what we want. And I'll just tell you the re one of the things that always sticks in my ear. I want everybody to be aware of this is when we were negotiating with the communities regarding what's the right assessment method. Leverett was always pointing at Shutesbury. Look at how much cash they got. Look at how much cash they got. I mean, so it's a trap we always have to watch out for. Because they never had any cash, at least at the time. That's it. Um, okay. Any other comments on four towns or questions? All right. Uh, Susie. I, I feel like um, there was 
a, there's a lot of stuff happening in Amherst and it's creating a fair amount of turmoil. So now that they've redecided about where the sixth graders should be and they're, you know, so they have a lot on their plate. And I, I know that means getting um, firm answers. Bef um, I think until the, the um, governor's budget is out or, you know, the next round, it's going to be a little hard to know what's actually going to happen. Okay. Uh, right. Not seeing any more hands. We can. Oh, sorry, Jim. This is a mid... Does anybody really think that the um, fair share, um, you know, a t um, tax on millionaires is really going to come into supporting education and secondary schools? I, is, do you think? That, I, I'm just curious. Do you think that's really going to happen? Because there was no assurance at all that we were going to be helped out, or let alone Amherst was going to be helped out by this. But I keep wondering about this all the time. Uh, Susie and then George. George. I think that speculation is not going to help us right now, but I do know yeah, that um, Maura Healy said she's going to fully fund the Student Opportunity Act. And I don't know where that funding is coming from. And then we hear Joe Comerford advocating for um, higher ed. So we know something will happen, but we can't really speculate or know. Uh, I, know. Right yeah, yeah. I, I realized that I was just, it was throwing it out. Uh, you know, I was, when Aaron Saunders was here, I made an issue of it and um, of taxing uh, in general. I basically said to him, listen, we were all approaching $25. Uh, as a tax rate, and it was because of education. And I said, I said to him, you know, valuations came along. All of a sudden, all our tax rates are low. Now we can keep, keep raising taxes, but the taxpayers are paying more. Cannabis yeah. came along, gambling came along. Now we've got gaming, right? And now we've got the, the the millionaire tax that people call it, the fair share. And I said, and I've seen no shift, no increase in any of the funding from the state. And I said, this is a time. Uh, I hope I didn't sound alarmist to him and sound like a nut, but you know. This is a time where the state should be evaluating how revenues, its methodology for funding a lot of things in the state now that we have this revenue. We used to be taxed at 585. We no longer need to be. The state is flush with the state is doing very well mm -hmm. with a 5% tax rate, but the municipalities are where the real taxes are going up. And it's got to be looked at. So I hope, you know, I know it's on the agenda, so I'm probably yeah. jumping the gun. But mm -hmm. my answer to Jim is they didn't give us extra money for a cannabis they didn't give us extra money when they got gambling what makes us think they're going to give us extra money now yeah i totally agree bothers me a lot becky but there's another issue too I, I and susie's brought it up before the other issue is um we're amherst is grandfather uh, is being grandfathered because the amount that we're getting paid is so much higher than in so many other communities so even if they distribute, you know, ten billion dollars, they might have to do that before we see any additional dollars. So, so Becky, I want you to know that I also raised that with him, and I, I made him aware of it, and he actually didn't know. And he looked at his guy, and he says, "Write that down." I said, "Yeah." I said, "If I told him, you know, we saw the change with the rural aid, we saw changes with funding communities like Holyoke and Springfield in our part of the woods because of the equity issues." And then I told him, and, and one of the ways Desi wanted to fund that was by cutting out grandfathering. And I said, that will devastate Amherst, which is already struggling, and it'll hurt other towns in this in this area. It'll hurt Pelham, it'll hurt us. And so he did make a note. You know, he promised us that he isn't here just to watch our tongues wag. He's also here to follow up on the issues we raise. And he made a, I remember he looked at his guy and said, hey, write that down. So, there, you know, I think we got Aaron to listen to us on that. We benefit from the fact that he was a selectman. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. All right. Um, next up, let's, uh, let's talk about scheduling uh, the rest of the budget year. I'm going to share. Um, schedule. All right. Um, okay. So when I'm working back, so I, 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 I got to start by mentioning 
this is uh, super inconvenient, but um, I just found out that actually I have a conflict. I'm going to be out of the country on May 20th, um, annual town meeting day. Um, and uh, so, I mean, that's, we'll have to, we'll have to talk about um, just kind of coverage and who's going to play what role um, at an annual town meeting. Um, really bummed out about it. Um, unfortunately, it's some, it's not something I can, I've got control over. Um, Angie, what dates yeah. will you be away? I am flying from the late on the 15th um, and I'm coming back late on the 21st. Wait, sorry, no, that's not right. Uh, just bear with me for a second. But the following weekend will be Labor Memorial Day. Yeah. Um, right. So I'm I'm flying out on the, the late on the 15th and coming back on the 22nd. Uh, uh, so um, I don't know. It is what it is. Like obviously, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we change annual town meeting to accommodate my schedule. But, I'll suggest um, it. <laughs> May 13th. Um, we we have a team. Don't yeah, exactly. Don't we do. Um, I would like to AJ, um, I, I was just questioning it because if we have any other issues that yeah. um you know, any other major issues that we need to move out the date one week. Um that's yeah. I, I there there's been a couple other things that have come up that okay. I'm taking to the select board. So I just want that's that, why that, I asked for your date. So, so just to be clear, that that might require you to push it one week. Is that what you're right. saying? Okay, yeah. Um, so that would certainly work for me. I'll be back. Um, okay. If it, if it was the 27th. Nevertheless, I think for t tonight we should kind of work backwards from May 20th, assuming that that is going to be annual town meeting. Um, I think since we have some extra time, I'm going to just sort of move backwards from this from that date. Um, since I think we have more time than um, usual, I think um, I would like to to be present at our budget presentation. And so, you know, one thought was we could perhaps pencil that in for Thursday, May 11th. Um, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be ready to go by then and have like a finalized budget report. And, you know, we'll have had the Warren audit girls approved by then. So that was one thought. I think we've done it on a, like usually, I, my memory is that we've been doing it on the Thursday before town meeting. I don't know if that's right, but uh, had sort of some vague recollection of that. So, so anyway, I, I saw that, Thursday night, the 11th, as an option for the budget presentation. Um, you know, a little more than a week before that, perhaps for at our at a May 2nd meeting, we could finalize a budget report um, and vote on that as a committee. I think um, uh, perhaps again, I'm just I just sort of threw these dates here. P folks, Be Becky in particular, should push back if I'm if if I'm making some assumptions here that um, that need to be reconsidered. Uh, I thought that might put us on a schedule to vote and approve artic warrant articles on April 25th. Um, and in terms of other regular FinCon meetings, I mean, we really right now we just. We have March 7th is going to be um, budget reviews for the accountant, the collector, and then capital planning, and then um, budget presentation with the broadband committee on March 21st. So there's a lot of, there's, there, there are a number of dates in, in April that um, would be available if we need them that we could sort of hold right now um, if it makes sense. Uh, but uh, didn't necessarily have particular like agenda items to, to throw on. So I don't know, what, do folks have any comments or reactions to this schedule? Is this, this seem, would this? My only question, yeah, my only question is, 
when would we see the um, the first draft of the budget? At this next, the upcoming meeting, and I'll be sending it out a week from today. Okay, so on the seventh. Yeah. Probably won't have a chance to talk about it that night, though. But yeah. still, okay, that's good. We get a chance to look at it, and so we would be able to talk about it on Tuesday, the twenty-first. Go through it, yeah. talk about the various lines. Are we okay with what it looks like? And, and Becky, we would have revenue information at that time as well. Um, new growth. Oh. No. We can do an estimate of new growth, which I usually do. Um, but I'm not sure the exact date the governor's information is coming out. I thought it was around March 1st. So I'm hoping that before the 7th to have her new projections, but I don't know if I'll have them. Well, the expense side is more important anyways. I mean, that's the first thing we want to look at. So we'll just, we can do the revenue line as it comes in. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm thinking about in, in terms of making the schedule different. Everything else looks okay to me. Like you said, if, if, if Becky thinks it's good. When, in terms of what we have to do for reporting to the public and when will the Warren articles be available for us to approve. Becky, just I, I see Susie's got a hand up, but, but before I go to her, does does the select board have they kind of set a date that they intend to um, uh, finalize warrant articles or like is there? Um, is there no, they were waiting on. Um, yeah, we've just been asking about what what's happening in FinCom okay, and their it. budget. So this is helpful. Okay. making sure that we have those dates and then i've been worried about the other pieces whether whether we can stick with um the the may 20th okay or, yeah. i know we can't move it up because all the elections has been based you know the election dates are all based on may 20th but i think we can push it out i still have to talk to grace about it and maybe susie has input all right well i certainly would again i don't want you to like do anything just on my for my no, it's, that it's, would be I'm, that would be good. It's another issue. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. A couple other issues. Gotcha. Susie and then Bob. Um we would get a governor's, I mean, I heard it in the news, but you can't believe the newspaper that we would get the governor's budget on March 1st. Do we usually um try to have information from the legislature draft? Um, to go on, or are we going to just go on the governor's? Well, I don't think the legislature usually has theirs done till it's usually done in late March, right? But we usually have the governor's end of January, then um, March we get the House, and then in April we get the Senate. Um, I don't know how, I don't think the House is very organized yet. Mm. So right. I don't think we're going to get much from the house. So we'll be we'll be we'll be guessing. And it's always been jello. So there we go. But it's weird. It's usually with a Democratic governor. Um, the numbers are usually higher um, than they could be higher than the House and Senate with a Republican governor. House and Senate is usually higher. Um, so it's it'll be tricky being the first year. All right, Bob. Yeah, my recollection, Becky, is that it's always late. But uh, so I just want to just I think that the Tuesday, April fourth meeting will be useful. I see we have broadband and the first glance at the the draft budget. I expect that we'll be continuing that discussion and having our our, our on those on that draft budget going through it. So. Hopefully that would be the, the Tuesday open date. We, we yeah. could, could be used for that, AJ. Yeah, I, I think we should plan on having a meeting on the on April fourth, and um, I'm sure there'll be kind of carryover discussion. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on the schedule? Um, anybody? have a conflict on, on that they know about for, for May 8th, uh, sorry, May 11th, um, the date I've got penciled in for our kind of budget info session with the town. I think that's super important to have 
kind of good coverage uh, at that meeting. So I'm hoping folks can can be available for that. Okay. Um, so we do. Okay. Usually we ask um, Paul Lyons to assist oh, yeah. on that. Right, so I should inquire with him about that date. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. That's that makes sense, Susie. And the last couple of years, we've gotten to the end and had a discussion or debate or unclarity or whatever about alternative reports, minority reports, whatever. Um, I think people should, if there is is a plan to do that, we need to start understanding how it fits in to this yeah. process. Right. Yeah. And I think the, you know, not not to sort of rehash like a whole complicated discussion, but I think the the I think the important one of the important points that came out of that discussion is that if that's going to be an option that's pursued, that there is going to have to be a, a draft that can be read um, by the committee and just discussion that can be had internally with our committee before um, you know before it's shared um, you know at the annual town meeting. So if folks are planning to do something like that, we'll we'll, we'll need notice and uh, need to put the, that on. Um, you know, these uh, on the agenda for one of these meetings. Bob. Yeah, I remember that discussion very well. And I think I'd like to uh, suggest that there be a minority report about that issue. Sorry. No, I think that may, there might be, uh, uh, there might be who know, unity, complete unity uh, after we discuss the budget. So I, it's hard, it's hard to, yeah. I think it's kind of uh, presumptuous or maybe uh, speculation to say that we're going to have a minority report until we have, <laughs> Dissent and and a, and a separation on certain issues. So yeah. let's well, let's let's have a good vigorous discussion about the budget and yeah. and then see where we are. How, how about that? Yeah, I think that makes sense. And just you know, by you know, cer certainly by um, you know April twenty fifth, we're going to be voting on Warren articles. So I would think you know that uh, that that <clears throat> that you know folks should have a kind of clear idea about what they want to do based on the. Uh, outcome of the discussions up to and including that that night. Makes sense. Okay. All right. So I will send this document so everybody has it. You should update your calendars accordingly. Okay. Um, George, uh, can you kind of walk us through the COLA discussion? Maybe I'll pull that up on the screen. Let's see. Where did it go? Okay. George, you're muted. No, he's not. Hmm. Can't hear you, George. His computer did something. Uh, he's got a reboot. Okay. All right. How could we still see him? I don't know. That that has yeah. happened. Voice goes. Like this has happened with him right before. Audio yeah. goes out, but not the picture. Usually, what you do, Becky, is freeze. Yeah. <laughs> Windows works in very strange ways. And and for me, everybody else freezes. Oh really? Yeah, you all freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know. Excellent. Okay, let me just change my name. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. I really don't. Marty doesn't use this computer. <laughs> I, I, it's weird. Okay. Some yeah. things just can't be explained. <laughs> uh, George, I'm just going to go ahead and, and share your Perfect. worksheet. Yeah. So the first paragraph is the policy that was agreed to by the three um, boards, um, personnel board and select board and the finance committee, boards and committees. And so, you know, I think you're all familiar with it, right? We take the last three years inflation numbers based on um, the New England CPI index and been told to keep it down. Um, and so if you go to the very bottom, there's the table. The day that the inflation numbers came out two weeks ago, um, the, these numbers came out. So I went and I picked up the indexes 
Um, at the top of this, you'll see it's the series is New England Urban Consumers. This is the one we all agreed to. It's, it's in our um, policy. And then there's the numbers in the January column on the table. Those numbers there are up above in rows 20 through 27. We can go up if, mm -hmm. if you want. And so you can see column row B yeah. from 20 all the way down. Those are the indexes for this particular um, table that um, for New England. And then you can see that the increase in the index is in column C. So for each year, it was 199%, 225%, 6.61%, 6 blah, 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 right. But our policy for our calculation, when we add up the three years, the number we use for each year, no single year can be less than 1%. So we used 1% for 2021. And no percentage can be greater than 4%. So last year for 22, nice. we have 4%. And for this year, of course, we all knew we also have 4%. So what you end up with is the last three years, one, four, and four is nine. That's a 3% increase divided, you know, averaged out over the three years. And that's essentially um, how we came up to that number. Okay. And, um, and has the personnel committee um, like voted on this or, or and approved it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, they have. Yeah, this is viable. Yeah. Okay. Great. And the personnel committee, one of the policies, um, just so everybody knows, a part of this policy was um, the requirement that every three years this policy is reviewed. So the personnel um, committee board is going to be um, doing an analysis of what the impact on this has been. And um, they might make a recommendation. I'm not saying they will, but you know, it's possible they can make a recommendation for fiscal 25 to use uh, some other method or a modification to this method or to rubber stamp this method and say, yeah, it's the way to keep going. Okay. And there's no indication that um, this like extraordinary circumstances um, like uh, option is gonna be utilized by the select board or uh, anybody else, right? I mean, no. Oh, you got muted again, George. Sorry, George, can't hear you now. Hmm. All right. He needs to change his name back to Marty. <laughs> all right. Um, George, can't hear you. Yeah, not at all, no. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Well, this looks like it's pretty straightforward <laughs> given <laughs> the last three years. Uh, we'll give, does anybody have a follow up question for George when, when he comes back up? Yeah, you got you, George. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, so you're, Mar you're, you're Marty again, and you sound fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, thanks for walking us through that. I, I'm not seeing any questions for George, so I assume everybody's up to speed. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Next on the agenda is, um, so we actually started to talk a little about this. Um, uh, I think Susie mentioned to me by email that there's gonna be kind of a regular standing meeting that Aaron Saunders is planning to do um, with Shootsbury. Can you remind me what the schedule of the first, first Tuesday of each month, 1230 at the library. Okay, first Tuesday of the month at 1230 which this time it'll be the 7th of March. Okay. All right. So at, at a previous meeting, we had discussed the idea of drafting um, kind of an advocacy letter. Um, and I, I think I think the thought now is, is that since he's going to be making, um, gonna be meeting with residents on a monthly basis that um, it, a more appropriate approach might be to just kind of have our committee just discuss some talking points that we might want to raise with him. Um, 
And so I thought it might be useful to put some, just a few the minutes few. on our agenda tonight um, to, to talk about some specific issues or requests that we might want to make um, to Aaron. So any anybody want to kind of get the ball rolling on this? Well, I'll just tell you, well, you've heard what, what I had to say at the last meeting uh, when, when he was here. And there was one other issue I did raise, but uh, the issues I raised were all revenue issues. Mm -hmm. It was about um, pilot money and the pilot formula. And there, I know he was in support of it because that was one of his campaigning points. And he did tell us that, you know, they've changed, they're changing the formula to take things into account. One of the points he made was property, you know, um, Pilot is based on the value of undeveloped property. Well, undeveloped property in Framingham, I think was his example, is worth a heck of a lot more money than undeveloped property in Shrewsbury. And he okay. said that they were going to try to address that. But just to the higher level, the points I made, I think, Susie, too, you brought up an issue. No, you talked about the, the building association was revenue um, and how you know, the, the important point where costs are rising much faster than the revenue from the state is increasing year to year. And we see it in the Chapter 70 money. We got five, $6,000 increase. And we're looking at a $99,000 increase or 87, whatever it is after the, the funding. So mm -hmm. that's one, one place that, you know, I think we should continue to be pushing. And then while I got the floor, um, as far as the letter goes, he's not the only person. I think we still need a letter because we want to send that letter to other people as well as Aaron. I think, yeah. Bob? Yeah, I just want to just to make a short response to what George said about Chapter 70. I want to make sure that everyone understands that the main reason for our Chapter 70 money is declining is that our enrollment is declining. Uh, state support per student has actually risen, but enrollment across the state has gone down which has, re has net result in a lower state aid from the 70 uh, program. But uh, one thing I would raise with Aaron and ask him at least what his views are about this PFAS um, issue, uh, which I know Joe Comerford has uh, put a bill on the state uh, Senate floor to address that. And I wonder what Saunders thinks about that issue. It would something that would concern me. I think uh, it's something very much in play as we know and uh, I would raise that issue with him. Okay, uh, Becky. And then Just wanted to respond to Bob. Um, he called, uh, he followed up with my short conversation with him at the last library meeting um, and brought about eight um, DP and Clean Water Trust folks to the fire station a week ago Friday, I believe it was, or Thursday, maybe it was Thursday. Um, and then since then, um, our, our problem is they have a trust fund that gives out 0% loans, but you have to be a public water supply to receive any of that funding. And so our public water supplies aren't contaminated, thank God at this point, like they are in New Salem and Wendell. Um, that's the school in uh, Swift River School in New Salem Wendell has PFAS. But they're still going to continue conversations. I've had some follow up emails and we're continuing to talk. So PFAS is something that Aaron jumped on, brought in a headliner crew of people that went from Shootsbury in New Salem to Greenfield and did a, a workshop in Greenfield for a lot of people. But we are, he is a, you know, he's, doing the best he can on the PFAS issue. That's good to keep that, to keep that an active issue. You know, if we could somehow divert the PFAS contaminated water into the Quabbin, that might be useful from our point of view. Um, <laughs> people might pay more attention to it. I did remind them just as I did with the gasoline years ago that that little, um, that little waterway next to the fire station does run into the Quabbin. And so if we have a lot of PFAS up here, it keeps moving. Yep. Thanks. Melody? Yeah, and I don't know if this has been addressed, but I would like to keep on his radar the cost, the rising cost of electricity in the state. 
because that does affect individuals and the town, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Susie and then Jim. And I think the other thing about the PFAS is part of the reason Aaron's already involved and showing up is because the town was so proactive and and had something going and talked to people and so it was good to hear him be with us and we are ahead of the curve um and and that's because of the actions the town took okay jim yeah how, how well attended have these um Aaron Saunders meetings been uh, to date? I'm curious. To, only yeah. one, right? There's only one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well it, 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 Kevin, how many people showed up? I mean, there were eight know. or nine people there. Eight or nine. Okay. Or maybe 10. Some 10. All right. I was curious. I'd about say, that. I was going to say 10 because some people came and went. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I think it was 14 altogether. Oh, wow. went. Well, that's a good number then. <laughs> it was an un unexpectedly high. Oh. All right. Um, I guess one other issue that I think I can't remember who brought it up at the four towns meeting was this issue of kind of charter school funding and yeah. how that was it was it Dan? Did you say okay? Yeah, and how that impacts um, you know our schools. Um, I think that's worth. <clears throat> that got brought up also last time. It did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this guy does seem to be in tune and of course he's just coming off of being elected so he's happy to see us and the north and the rural counties or really rural towns helped elect him but mm -hmm. he he does seem to be aware and and again the what george said it's great that he used to be a select board and so actually that was part of my goal is to keep reflecting to him you know this stuff you know here we are doing this because that's what select boards and, and FinComs are doing this time of year. And he's he's very aware. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Anybody else? So we've got kind of a nice collection of topics here from state support for public, public this school is funding, charter school funding, pilot, pilot, PFAS, rising costs of electricity. Yeah. Jim? Uh, yeah, this is this may be a little uh, off the track a bit, but did he mention anything about um, forestry and the mast um, DCR and some of the horrific things that are happening in the Quabbin? I, I'm curious to know whether he, he he expressed that as an as a campaign issue, clear cutting and all the rest of it. And um, it, the situation is um, pretty severe. It's taken place even here in Shutesbury very, very recently. It's a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I know it's not really um, one of the economic ones that we're so concerned with, but I'm just curious if he mentioned anything about that. Yes, yeah, so that uh, there was a bill that um, some people came specifically to support, which uh, I don't know where those new notes would be. Oh, but it's HC something and but he knew has, what it was has to do with for um forestry he was aware of the bill he was yeah. very he was prepared for the questions that he got from the audience and there were people as susie said who were there specifically for that conversation huh oh that's fair hmm. oh it's called hd 1020 hd 1020 Forest protection and hd uh 652 Oh, thank you very much. That's helpful information. Okay. Anything else? All right. So I'm going to try to make the next the next meeting. I was hoping to attend this last one and I had something come up. So okay. Very good. Um, let's see. Next on the agenda are committee updates. Does anybody have? Committee updates. Um, yeah, Susie, we've got a new school budget, right? Right. So we got the new school budget, and I highlighted uh, or I mentioned the lines that changed. Um, they reported that um, 
The safety features, the, the um, phones will be installed over this break week. And, um, and um, the next thing after that, which is a pretty prime, primary thing for safety is to have a working phone system, is um, they're gonna be looking at the cameras um, for building and yard and ground security. And um, when they presented that budget, the final sentence was, um, uh, we hope these changes are sustainable. Um, and uh, another thought. Oh, they they are doing new um, new reading and um, new math curriculum, and I asked if that would be um, impacting the budget. And the and they said that they felt they were going to meet those costs. Um, in the supply line that they have, because most education now doesn't work from textbooks, so you're not doing a big upfront on textbooks. And um, one aspect of the new curriculums are professional development, which they have some funding for, and they expect that they're going to fit it into the budget. Um, they also already have a lot of the instructional materials that any math system um, and that kind of stuff would use. So. Some changes ahead. They are actually um, leaders in piloting some of it, and they feel uh, good about the choices that are available to them, and they will be moving into um, that more um, as part of FY24. Okay. Um, Bob. Yeah, I just want to uh, raise the issue that I raised at the meeting when we discussed this draft budget uh, before these changes were implemented, which is that the school choice, in my opinion, should be uh, shown as revenue and the budget should be, the real uh, level of budget spending should be represented in this document. So when am I gonna get a chance to call that to as a question for this committee before we uh, just incorporate this budget? Uh, Dan Hayes did say, if the finance committee wanted him, us him to organize it that way he would be happy to so i'm saying he should be organizing it that way that's my opinion and uh, i'd just like to know what others on the committee think and whether we should have a discussion or a vote about that all right so i think to answer the question i i, I did commit at that during that discussion that we would that we as a committee would have a com conversation about any changes we want in how the budget is presented. Um, so I think um, we should um, we should add that topic um, to an upcoming meeting. So I'm thinking March 21st. Probably March 21st. Yeah. Okay. And and and, and I think. You know, to be clear, right? We're, we're, the 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 invitation from Dan was if you if if our, if if our committee wants them to present budget information in a different way, they're open to that. And it's it's sort of the onus on us is to kind of articulate very clearly what those changes are, and that's going to require that you know we have a consensus among our group about what those changes are. So Bob, I think it is it is an appropriate thing for us to discuss. And so let's add that to the uh, 21st budget, uh, sorry, 21st agenda. Uh, Jim? Yes, uh, news from the MLP. Um, uh, Gail and the MLP recently got back the results of a survey that was uh, done uh, that was sent out to all of the 53 towns that have been working on broadband, um, asking a lot of questions. And one of them was um, what your um, what your subscription costs were. And you and everybody in Shrewsbury will be pleased to know that uh, of all the all the towns uh, in Western Massachusetts, uh, Shrewsbury has the lowest the lowest rate uh, for um, internet and phone. And it's not by a few cents or a few dollars, it's $10 lower than everybody else in Western Massachusetts and um, probably a lot of other places too. 
And um, that's due to the fact that our take rate is the highest of any of these of these member towns as well. What is so, it, Jim? Is it 80 or something? Yeah, it's a, what is it? Like 80, yeah, yeah it's, it's very close to 90%. Okay. It's, it's strikingly, strikingly high, which is one of the reasons why our rates are correspondingly low because we have so many people participating in it. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of news, which is a little bit not so welcome, is that um, this little snowstorm we had, a uh, snow and ice storm, cost us a bundle. And um, we're, we, we've gone to the insurance company um, because we're well over $10,000. It's about 17 grand so far and rising. And um, it was a very expensive storm. Probably not as bad as it would have been if we were back in 2006 in the ice storm that we have, in, you know, then we had that we had at that time. But still, it was um, it, it, it cost us a lot. Hi, uh, George. Yeah, so uh, news from the personnel board. Um, uh, we were approached by the CONCOM and their agent, um, well, the land use clerk um, is not going to be sticking around for very long. And so we're meeting with, we met with Miriam to talk about uh, the different options for replacing that person. The land use clerk supports the zoning board planning board and the CONCOM. And so it's gonna be a problem for those other two boards as well. But um, the towns of Wendell and Leverett share a person. They don't share the person, but this person does the work for both of them. And this person is also leaving. So we actually uh, met, I didn't meet, but um, I think it was April and Peg met with, um, those two towns and there is a conversation, but it does look like their needs do differ from ours. So we don't know if that's really gonna go anywhere, but we are looking at possibly reshuffling some of the staffing um, for the support to those three boards. I'll keep you posted as we get more information, um, but that's probably the big thing going on with, that, with the personnel board. Sounds Thank like you. it's not gonna happen this year. Yeah, the the, com the combination of one person for all three towns. Right. That's not going to happen at all. Yeah. Because, you know, regionalizing, the, getting an agreement between three towns, you can imagine what that would be like. So it's just, mm -hmm. it's not even close. But that is a conversation. And, you know, I'll, I'll just, while I got the phone, microphone, in the long run, if we got to keep cutting costs and we got to figure our budgets out, regionalizing might be the way to you know, to approach it in a number of different areas and try to get economies of scale of two or three towns together. So, you know, it'd be great if we could regionalize something so that we could create a model and refine that model and maybe expand it. But, you know, that's a conversation. Yeah. Thank you. The problem in this case is the other two towns have no appetite for um, adding benefits and an increased salary which was um, going to be part of the package for a CONCOM agent. And that would also increase our costs um, as well because we currently don't pay benefits to the land use clerk. And um, the way CONCOM was looking at it, they wanted to maintain the land use clerk and have that person, the total hours would drop from uh, up to 19 to maybe eight to 10, and then have another 10 hour week position with um, as an agent, a CONCOM agent, that would cost more than the current clerk costs. So, um, you know, if we started to regionalize that position quickly gets benefited. Uh, and that's where working with other communities, the balance for small towns and regionalizing, is always tricky because frequently there is no cost savings. There was no cost savings in the last um, attempt to regionalize with Amherst, uh, Pelham, and Leverett. It would have cost us more. So you have well, to do the exercise, but it's not a guarantee. Just to finish that thought, and, and, and those are really good points, Becky, uh, but I would also say conversely, sometimes you're in a situation where you need a professional somebody who has a degree, somebody who expects to work mm -hmm. full time and no single town can hire that person. 
but maybe three towns can and share the cost. So, you know, re that's one of the benefits of regionalization. It may not apply here, but it is certainly a reason to consider it in the long run. Susie? So I um, did not, it's just in the in the air. I thought part of this was to go through FERCLAG, and I wondered if the um, Franklin County Building Inspection Program was a regional model. Um, and and that FERCOG is a place that sometimes regional services get some under their umbrella. I wondered if that was if that was what when they talked about a conservation agent, if they were talking about it via FERCOG. Yes, uh, they were part of the eight towns that were talking in conversation with FERCOG. FERCOG did not end up putting together um, a CONCOM agent. Um, they just wrote a feasibility report with um, a number of suggestions for each of the eight towns and also the encouragement that those eight towns work together. It wasn't like their accounting program or um, right. their treasurer program where they go into, you know, you can hire somebody for one day a week to do all your accounting or all your um, work at for treasurer or assessor um, like the RRGs have done with um, you can get an, a person to come out and be your assessor for one day a week but a number of these programs have been floated the costs of them uh, especially the accounting coming out of FERCOG have been um, well at $45 an hour in comparison to if you actually have a good accountant on staff, there's it's it is much more expensive. It again, it's not a cost savings really um, to the community. And if you've got somebody good, don't let go of them. Mm -hmm. Bob, yeah, it just it just uh, shows you why healthcare should be nationalized for ground out loud. Uh, that everybody and I've been in business for a long time, and you know benefits are very expensive. And it seems kind of mean in a way to try to skirt that responsibility as an employer, but that it's ridiculous that employers should have that responsibility, in my opinion. But certainly, I agree with George that you know, being a small town, being surrounded by other towns in like circumstances, that we should try to explore ways to share the way we share, like the FERCOC thing, as Susie pointed out, the building inspector, the health agent, and some other. Uh, required services that we cannot afford to uh, undertake to supply to ourselves uh, because of the expense. Why can't we look into doing some some of the, the, the similar things with with this agent that that, that supports Concom and and planning and and also we could look at other departments such as a highway department sharing equipment with other towns and and we know the school shares some specialized teachers with other towns in, in our Union 28. So this is something we we really got to look into. I agree with George and Susie on this. And there must be some ways, at least in some cases, to save some money and to provide useful services to town uh, citizens. Just to be clear, it was CONCOM who was pulling out. Okay, um, any other committee updates? I um, already mentioned capital planning earlier uh, is gonna be meeting with us on the 7th, um, hopefully. Um, there's a chance that might get pushed to the 21st if we don't get the information we've requested. But, um, in any event, we should we sh we're just looking at requests from the highway department and the elementary school this year, and one of the school initial school requests was for the phone system, which I think is now being funded um, using uh, other other op operating budget funds. So that's not going to be a capital request this year. Okay, any other updates from any committees? Any other issues that need to be addressed tonight? If if I may, um, yeah. when we were talking about the four towns, uh, one question I forgot to raise: um, Do we know what's going on with the regional agreement? 
is there conversation about updating the regional agreement? Uh, Amherst brings it up occasionally, but it didn't come up in this last meeting. No, I mean, I think, I think Mike Morris mentioned it at like two four town meetings ago and, and sort of didn't spend a lot of time, but just acknowledged that that's, that's uh, something that um, is going to need to happen at some point in the future. Susie? So Becky, I went, I know you were uh, around when the last one was written. Um, and so what is the format? Do they get a person from each town and then the business office or somebody, the superintendent sits down and writes it? What are you, are you talking about the regional agreement? Yeah. Yeah, regional uh, middle school, high school. Um, I guess they might, I don't know how they're handling the sixth grade. That seems like it should have been, and it's, and it wasn't a group of, it's the lawyers review it. <laughs> and when we, um, we looked, when we went through the last regionalization process with the four towns, yeah, it was, we were broken up into all different kinds of groups. Everybody took different sections to figure out if, if the ideas would impact the regional agreement, we work on legal documents to, to move forward with. But as you all remember, we end up not in agreement. Um, did everybody hear the person? Uh, I think she was from Amherst or Leverett suggesting we uh, look at regionalization again to save money. <laughs> One of the informed people said that, right? Yes. <laughs> Everybody else stayed real quiet, like, oh, well, dear God. One of the things that's happening is we're getting turnover in a lot of the committees in a lot of the towns. And so the history isn't there for everybody. Right. right. But that could be a good thing. I, I mean, maybe, yes. maybe I agree. Um, a, a new group of people that um, could find a different path. I don't know. It helped us with the regional school committee. Yeah. So would you guess that um, at some point when the uh, things settle out a little bit, Mike Morris might be soliciting for members from towns to come in, break up the assessment, um, break up the agreement into parts and, and be looking at it? No, I, I think it would only be on an initiative. I, I think um, I think you would, that's the final phase of looking right. at regionalization. A draft part. For, yeah, that's the final stage. So you've got to have figured out everything you're going to do. What not the regional agreement a pretty solid document where maybe mm -hmm. we just need to make some edits to it, the regional school method, the assessment method, and then Amherst in their governance change? I mean, how extensive would that process you have? have? Yeah, you just have to be real careful that they don't change it from, you know, that... You want to make sure they don't get rid of having all four towns agree on on a on a change in form of government because that's what they've tried to get rid of in the past. Um, because Shoots Mary was usually the one who um, yeah, you know, kept them from falling through their pants. Yeah, we were we were the odd man out a number of times, but it's been important that it takes all three towns or all four towns, all three towns on the budget. Um, or at least, yeah, if three towns vote the budget, the fourth town has to pay. And it's basically the same on the agreement. Um, but the agreement, what they were referring to is that section of the agreement that we see every year about the assessment, the alternative assessment formula. And they, every year that we had it two in a row for the first time this year. And that's what he was so excited about because they've been under the gun from DESE um, to solidify and stop making continual changes and continual arguments from our communities. So um, I think that's that's what he was bringing up. That And this is why I'm bringing it up. I'd love to see that thing inked in ink, you know? Right. Uh, I think that the re I agree with you, Becky, the reason that the idea of, of, of uh, crushing the uh, regional agreement and redrawing it was a way to browbeat us uh, by some of the members of the uh, Amherst uh, contingent. And uh, you know, the, the fact is that they, they are losing enrollment there too in the regional schools. And 
The last thing they need to do is get rid of one of the towns. I mean, that's a hollow threat, really, it is. The, the, but with the, I, the agreement that we have now, they can't do it. Right, and the, and, and the thing I find objectionable about the regional agreement is that Pelham gets two members on the regional school committee and we get one. I mean, where where's what's that all about? That's just because of Pelham was there first or something? That yep. seems patently unfair. We're slow to the table. It took us an extra <laughs> year. <laughs> you know, it was a longer, it was a farther drive into Amherst, so. Yeah, right, the boonies don't ever notice. Don't, they can't count higher than one out there, come on. <laughs> Well, it sounds like then a new regional agreement won't be a simple thing to do. No, it's mm. somebody will get a pet peeve and it'll take another 10 years. Yeah. Are we going to get a chance to look over the expense report? Oh, that's right. Uh, that was not on the agenda. But uh, yeah, did have folks had a chance to look at it? I uh, know I haven't, but um, if others have questions about it. Uh, it was sent on a couple days ago. What is it? Uh, looks like last week, sixteenth. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not. So it's. This is fairly fresh then. Yeah. Well, the one thing I noticed was the FinCon Reserve balance hasn't changed. I noticed that it's down. We talked about it's down twenty five hundred dollars from the balance, which is seventy five thousand in the balance column. But I noticed that there is a $2,500 legal line slash or dash ComCon or lot 032. So the yeah. 32, the 2,500 was transferred. It's just not in the expense column. But I know that, you know, I think looking at the minutes, we're down to under $39,000 in the balance and I, it's not here yet. So Becky, did you know, it, are you still waiting for some- Gail, um, The next one will show it. Okay. Because I know you may not have gotten the signatures from everybody either. Right. Everybody, I finally, I'm finally just giving them to her today. And I still have to do, and I want, that's what I wanted to remind you guys. I'll have the one for Ellen's transfer. Wasn't in the pile. I need to give you the, I think it was around 5,800 from last meeting. I need to get in the box. And the I ransom went, payment. You know, yeah, the ransom payment. So I've got to get that one printed and out there for you guys to come in and sign. I'll email you hopefully tomorrow when I get it in the box. Okay. So a ballpark balance is 33,950. Is that what you said? Um, I think it's 39. I can pull it up. Um, it's 33,950. Yeah. yeah. I, I find that the sheet is um, the expense sheets. I haven't figured out how to read them in any effective <laughs> way. And so I tend to not read them. So <laughs> that's not a great idea. Um, I don't quite know. I, I, I don't feel like it's a, um, that's why I was thinking having two people look at it, maybe they can go to each other into a conversation and then change who those two people are. So everybody takes a turn to figure out how to read them. Well, and, one, if I may, I would make the suggestion that, you know, we're going to be meeting with Gail and wouldn't it be nice if we asked Gail to walk us through it, the layout and why it's laid out the way it is. I mm. at first had the same feeling, Susie, but I've kind of figured it out because you can see the descriptions of where there's an account number. There's a description to the right. Yeah. So, you know, so I can kind of, I kind of figured it out that way, but it wouldn't hurt to, you know, ask Gail some, some questions and, and are there other ways of digesting this? Right. And there are subtotals uh, on departments like the old one. And some, and some of them are even better than the old one. Like you have a subtotal for the police department and the fire department. We didn't used to have that. And you're bold, so they stick right out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just feel like I know myself and being daunted by this much, um, I need to sit with somebody to do it, or I just don't do it. I, I'm not, it's not because I'm ignorant. <laughs> it's just, no, I, I think Gail could probably help us all. I'm seeing that. Uh... We could all just be resistant to change. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because we're all 
gray haired, bold, and yeah. whatever else. Not <laughs> everybody, <Irish>. George. <laughs> oh, okay. There's at least two people that are much younger here. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I did have a couple other lines I wanted to ask about. Go ahead, George. Page two, the assistant town collector. It was not so much about the way it's being spent. I noticed that it's way underspent. And I think it's probably because Ryan is caught up in, in a good place as far as his knowledge of town collector. Can you, Becky, give us a little update on that? Um, so he fills in for Ellen when she's away, but he has a pretty, so he usually comes in for about six hours while she's away, you know, over a week. He's not, it's not like he's sitting here for a full, you know, 15 or 20 hours. He comes in a couple of the days, catches up all the, the relevant incoming stuff and answers questions for people. Part of it also was last year, he spent more time because he was being trained, but that level of those hours aren't needed anymore, right? Right. Okay. And as Ellen takes more time off, you'll see it grow more. Right, and because of COVID, she did not go away. So, but she is she is traveling now. But he's yeah. got other daytime commitments, so he's not here the full time. She's out, mm -hmm. which he could be, but um, he, you know, he's covering it for us, so she doesn't come back to as much stuff. Good rule. And a couple, a couple lines that look like they might be pro trouble lines, right? This, the building, um, town hall heating, looks like um, we're spent over 80, what, 82% of it. Looks yeah. like that's gonna be a problem this year, huh? Oh yeah, uh, we got hit with that increase in electrical costs. My contract ended in December. Um, I was able to contract to, I think I got to 16 cents but I had been at 10 and a half or 10 and three quarters per kilowatt hour. So we, for the, you know, half of the year, we got really nailed there. It does, it does look like the legislature is dealing with it or the DPU is dealing with it and they might cut the rates sooner than they were planning. So I, I get that doesn't help you, I understand, but I know it's an issue for a lot of other people as somebody mentioned earlier. The uh, highway maintenance looks like another line that we're gonna have a problem with machinery maintenance. Yeah. Over. Yeah, Gail alerted me we were overspent on that. Yeah, by a lot. And yeah. we're still only in February. Well, I don't know, Tim Tim told us with capital planning, I think he may have told us here at finance too, that he had some problems with a couple of pieces of machinery. And so he had to spend up, he had to really, really dig into that account. And he expected if it was normal year for, from then on, that was going to be, he was going to be coming to us for some money. So, you know, I know we're getting low. Uh, our our account with thirty thousand plus dollars, right? So we might we'll have to see how, how the rest of the winter goes, which is hopefully getting close to being over. But uh, definitely, Tim did give us a heads up about that problem uh, months ago, and I expect that we're going to have to do something about it. Yeah, and um, Gail told me this when she was doing the last round of bills coming in that Tim is over, so he he needs to schedule a visit. I wanted to ask, you know, I want to make a comment. Are you, are you done, George? Are you still have things? I have one of the line, but you know, if you're on this line, you want to talk about it. Uh, I just want to say, that, you know, we did spend quite a bit of money winterizing and putting efficiency uh, renovations into our buildings. Uh, I know that from being on the building committee and. Uh, we spent quite a bit of money uh, there, there, and you know, it just seems uh, it's hard for me to detect where we saved money uh, from an increased efficiency. Uh, I know there's a lot of other variables besides uh, insulation and uh, heating efficiency and so forth. But uh, and related to that is the question of when we have been buying a lot of expensive software, a lot of plugins to integrate the software. So there's a lot of communication between town departments such as uh, uh, tax collecting, assessing, accountancy, and so forth. Uh, we're gonna see some efficiencies there that are reflected into the budget in other places, or, or is it just uh, something that reduces the growth in spending? I, that, that's a question. Becky, I can't hear you, you're, you're muted, I guess. Oh, no, I wasn't talking. <laughs> okay. 
I thought I saw your mouth moving. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I was just thinking. Um, so a part of the issue is on the efficiencies with our, our accountant and our tax collector, neither of them, um, they're salaried. So they get paid the exact same, um, no matter how many hours they work. So you're not gonna see an efficiency there, even if they uh, are putting in less time, they might be able to take on different projects that they couldn't have had, which is most likely because they both, um, you know, are, are always involved in new things. So you won't see a direct uh, per hour cost efficiency in, in the VADAR um, time. You might see um, that it's, you know, we won't have an increase or overage of hours that we've had before. Um, and as far as the, the electric has been confusing uh, because of the I cut it, I cut back the dollars, um, we cut back the budget and then the rates went up. And so then we were over um, overspent again. So as things settle out and as we have systems in place that we can manage better, like um, we have these heating units, the most everything is on number two fuel oil, but then we have the mini splits in two big areas. So we have to, find a way to manage them better. Maybe we will see better cost um, savings that way. But you're right, I haven't seen clear, huge numbers, but I think we've kept a lot of costs down that could have been higher. Kind of ironic that the state is pushing us towards all electric and electric. Yeah. You know. I just put in a heat pump last fall. Let me tell you, my electric <laughs> bill shot up. Yeah. It was the worst time to do it. Yeah. Well, I got solar coming in. Oh, my last question is uh, about my, or the last line I wanted to flag was the highway snow removal on the top of page six. It's ironic to me that we're spending 84% of that line through February. And I don't think we've had eight inches of snow all winter. I think we need to change that to ice removal. But I assume ice that that's what snow. it is. What's that? Ice and snow. Yeah, snow and I know, ice. but we just had no snow. And, and I can't believe that with the little amount of snow we've had this year that we've actually almost spent the whole line. It's because uh, ice is worse than snow. In a yeah, lot it, of it is ice, yeah. And it's the dirt roads, right, Becky? Yep. I'm just wondering if we need to bump that line up. I don't know. We might I hate have to do it. this year. Also, so snow removal expense, that's the salt in, in sand, right? Yep. Also the overtime, right? The overtime is in the snow removal wages. The line above it, Bob. So we're in really good shape for February in those accounts. Because it's almost over. Right, but for February, we're usually down to, you know, $1,000 here or looking at overdrawing, so. Yeah, I'm worried about, yeah, I mean, if if we have a lot of salt and sand in the highway garage, then yeah, I guess we are good for the year. We're definitely going to have more events before um, the weather gets warm. But certainly on the wage side, we're good. But if we don't have enough in storage, we might have to buy more, right? I think he was just buying, wondering if we, I, it was a couple of weeks, within the last couple of weeks, he just um, bought a lot more sand and stuff, wondering if he would need it or not, a little nervous about it. Well, but that carries over, right? There's no harm in having too much. Yeah, because then we had that terrible blizzard. Um, you just don't know. Yeah. But you're thinking maybe he's already stocked up. I think so. Oh, that's good. Okay, so maybe this line's not an issue. But I can't be certain that all the bills have hit. Yeah, understood. Susie? And one thing I wanted to say about living life is that you know, the place, uh, the town has put some energy into winterizing and we might have been able to see a drop in the number of kilowatts, but the rates went up, but then we have mini splits and that changes how many kilowatts we use. So nothing is straight ahead. Right. Um, and we've been trying to do that at our own house. Okay, so we're buying less oil, but we're spending more on electricity and it goes out in a very different, it feels really different and how to figure out the sum total um, it's pretty difficult, and I can imagine that's true at the town level, too. 
But we've got some nice tools. If we can get into a uh, more settled position, we should be able to get a handle on it. Because ideally, with this with this wonderful old dog of a building, mm. um, with having the few, number two fuel oil and having a significant enough mini splits, um, we're trying to you know we're trying to use, but they're both high right now. So yeah. You know, so then what do you do? Turn it off? Um, right. right. Invest in sweaters for all town employees. Hey, I got mm. triple mm. layers. <laughs> I've got the thermostat that goes off automatically at six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Becky, so you're freezing right now. No, I'm just getting a little, um, I'm sitting higher on my ball, <laughs> ready to get towards the door. <laughs> All right. On that There's note, <laughs> yeah. Any other final issues? Where are you going, AJ? Uh, where am I going in in May? When uh, I'm going to Out Spain? Country. I'm going to Big Barcelona. Um, a wedding of a cousin of mine, like kind of almost like a sister. But yeah, uh, great city. Have fun. You're gonna love it. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Taking the whole family, so it should be great. Go to the church, La Familia, yeah. Sagrada La Familia. It's amazing. Yeah. I make a motion. We adjourn the meeting. Second. <laughs> Arbonitis. Oh. Aye. Frontier, aye. Groves, aye. Hemingway, aye. Cashew, aye. Mosier, aye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you. Have a good couple of weeks. Hey, See George. you. Peace See you. Celtics. Yes. Go Celtics. Tatum, huh? They're on Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, two nights from now, yes. Yeah, um, Indiana. Yeah. Team yeah. looks good. I mean, if they stay healthy, they, you know, Milwaukee's going to be tough if they're healthy. But um, about, uh, yeah. the Time Lord, he looks a little bit like worn out already, doesn't he? It's been the story of his career. He's always injured, you know? Delicate, you, yeah. You, you got to, hopefully, he'll be having it together for the playoffs. Save him up. Yeah. Time Lord and, and uh, Horford, you know, Time Lord is Robert is, Williams. Is fragile. Oh, Robert Williams. Yeah. yeah, he's the Time Lord. You didn't know that? <laughs> no. Yeah, he's the Time Lord. Because he was late doesn't for. Tell me that kind of stuff. He was late for uh, practice or something and he got slapped with a nickname. <laughs> and it's. Well, I'll see you guys soon. Yep. Take care. See Bye. you, Becky. Bye.